Shalom, Shalom Israel. I want to give first and foremost praise and a double honors to the apostles and the elders that are springing forth this truth, you know, edifying our people, edifying the young generation, making our people know who they are, that we are the chosen people of the back, we are the chosen people of the Most High. So, all the apostles all over that are um, bringing forth this truth all over the world, from the west to the north, etc. Many thanks and many praises to you, and obviously to the viewers out there, to every Israelite woman and child, we hope that you be edified by, edified by the lesson that we are about to present to you today. Yeah, so before we start the lesson, we're going to say all praises to Yahweh, Hashem, 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 you know, times, times increasing so rapidly. Hence, hence wickedness is increasing because the devil knows he has nothing but a short time. You know, and it's the time where we've got to increase our faith, increase our confidence, you know, increase our belief within the Most High because when times get tough, we're going to require the Most High. We're not going to be able to trust the man. There's going to be no man on earth that's going to be able to, uh, going to, be able to deliver us out of this wicked kingdom, all this wickedness that the enemy is trying to deploy, you know, there's going to be no man to save us except Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, the Most High, you know, the, our, our, our Heavenly Father, he's going, to be the one, he's going to be the one that's going to be able to deliver us in during dark and scary times when there's massive tribulation, there's massive, when there's going to be war, there's going to be mourning, there's going to be almost like a movie, there's going to be blood, gore, and horror everywhere, you know, and obviously we're going to, we're going to be required for the most trying to deliver us out of, out of that predicament. And it's a central case where, again, having faith is the key because it's easy to say, yeah, I've got faith when you're all good, when you when you feel like you're certified, you know, when you feel like you're not in danger, it's all good to say, yeah, I've got faith, I'm this, I'm that, I'm, you know, I'm a man of myself, I can defend myself at all times, I ain't scared of anything, I'm not worried about what anyone's gonna do. But when, when times get real, when times get tough, that's when your your threat, your your test of faith is going to be is going to be tested, and that's when we're going to see how much your, how much faith you really have in the most high. We're going to see how how strong and tough you really are. But essentially, we don't have we don't have strength and toughness within ourselves that comes from the most high. You know, he's the one that gives us the strength and and the might, and also the conviction to to give us the ability to um, to wrestle ourselves out of any predicament that's obviously not conducive for us. Yeah, it's in Jeremiah chapter 17, starting at verse 5. Thus saith Yahweh, Cursed be the man that trusted in man and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from Yahweh. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. So the people that trust in man, that put their faith in man, aka take the motion, aka take the bargain, take the emotion. They're essentially going to be lost. They're going to be like a man in the wilderness in the past places. That's like a man in the desert. When a man's in the desert, there's no direction. He's lost. He doesn't know where to go. He doesn't know, he doesn't know where we should go north, east, south, or uh, north, south, I mean, north, south, east, or west. This is verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusted in Yahweh, the man whose hope Yahweh is. So in his last days, when his perilous per time has come, when his perilous time has come, Yahweh's our only hope. Can't trust the man. We're gonna have to allow Yahweh. Yeah. 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 Call me. Call me. We're gonna have to. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to um, allow Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, to direct our steps, yeah. to lead us on where to go. Yeah. We can't trust the man. Yeah. Um, do you feel go to Psalm 118 verse 8? It's the Book of Psalms 108. This is the book of Psalms 118, starting at verse 8. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in princes. Like you saw, pretty much what, uh, pretty much increasing to what the Bible was saying about um, from Jeremiah trusting in the Lord and not trusting in man. Because you know, when times get sticky, the, uh, the Lord Yahweh Bashim is our only hope. And that's obviously King David right there saying that. 
this. Your, it, it's not best practice at all to put your faith and trust in man because no man's going to deliver you out of times of trouble. And verse 9 it says, no, no, and it's better not to put your trust in princes because no kings, princes, whatever, whoever, men, men of the meaning, etc., they're not going to be able to deliver you out of right. times. You know what I'm saying? They, they might be, from a con level, they might seem very masculine, alpha, and assertive, but trust me, when the rain's going to fall down, they, they ain't going to be there to save you, you know? Mm -hmm. So, never mind putting your trust and faith in, in humans or men in general because they ain't going to do time, they ain't going to do justice when time comes. Um, go to Psalm 78, uh, 21 and 22. Uh, let's go for Psalm 3. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened. So that's basically going into the great tribulation when the job rates are going to be extremely low. The strong men meaning the government, the, the government official, the prime minister, the presidents, their, 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 their strength is going to um, their, their strength is going to wax weak. Because the, 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 the economy's falling, you know, um, there's going to be great tribulation. You know, you can't, you can't rely on these government officials. We're going to have to rely on Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah because these are mortal men, and essentially, the most has put them, essentially, the most has put the spirit on these men to do what they have to do. So, essentially, in that day of tribulation, the most has going to put the spirit on these men to wax weak. So, how can you put, how you can't put your faith in these men if, if, the, if, the, if um, Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah has put the spirit on these men? To, um, to, to pretty much move for his will, then I mean it's only logical to put your faith in the, in, in the person that's controlling these people, right? What, what, what was your precept? Um, Psalm 78 from 21 to 22. Psalm 78, starting at verse 21. Therefore, Yahweh heard us and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also came up against Israel, because they believed not in Yahweh and trusted not in his salvation. So that right there goes to show that when you do lack faith, you don't trust the Most High's salvation. It angers him and annoys him because the Most High's the Most High's what faith. He wants faith from from his woman, and also you. Us Israelites, we are the most high, we are the most high women. As you can see right there, it says his anger and his wrath were kinged up against uh, Jacob such Israel because they trust not in, in, in his salvation. But when that time comes, when famine and destruction comes, we'll have no choice but to result to having faith because faith again is a is a powerful quality that the most high appreciates. You know, it annoys him when we don't have faith, and also that's what we're gonna be required to have when tribulation and famine comes because there's going to be no, there's going to be no one else to deliver us except the Most High. Because remember, like what the brother was saying earlier, he's the one that puts spirit upon people. He's the one that gives people the strength. He's the one that gives people weaknesses. So if the Most High is in control of everything, it's going to show that he's the one that has the power. He's the one that has the, he's, he's the one that has the Almighty slash um, ultimate dominion. You know, he's the one that controls both good and evil. So he's the one that we're gonna, he's the one that we're gonna have to call upon when when times get tough. You know. Because again, no matter who your friends are, no matter who your who your spouse is, because again, when when times are going to get sticky, they bail out on you, especially with with women. Women are very carnal because they all they women will happily be on your side, they'll happily be on your boat when you have the money, when you got the luxury car, the luxury houses, when everything is all substantial. But when it comes to a time where you know it's fight or flight, as they say. When it comes to fight or flight, they will bail out on you because you know a lot of people have like survival instincts, and they're not going to think logically. They're going to do what's best practice for themselves. They're not going to resort to the word. You know, they're not going to think about you know, how my shame will shine. My children of Israel, this is what we need to do because this is, you know, the Most High is our heavenly Father. He, he's the one that created us. So having this, having the, the policy of faith, is, is the key when during when when the time of destruction comes. Uh, it's in James chapter 1 starting at verse 5 if, if any of you lack wisdom 
let it pass the most high that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall and it shall be given him but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of your hour a double man man is unstable in all his ways so faith is essentially a gift so if, if any of you have faith you have to ask the Lord because faith is a gift you know, that the most time essentially puts the spirit upon you to have faith and notice how it says if you ask something about faith it's impossible to please him so you need faith faith is extremely important faith and following the law statute and essentially in order to build your faith as well you have to follow the law statutes and commandments of the most time. you have to meditate in the scriptures there and there and now you have to pray and fast these, these things are all a part of the work given up these things are all a part of the work so when the famine the destruction the pestilence the sword comes you're gonna have faith the father shall fall out your rights let me get the priest This is Psalm chapter 91, starting at verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. The thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at that right hand where it shall not come nigh thee only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made Yahweh which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil before thee neither shall any plague come now neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. So that's essentially having faith and following and doing the work and the most times to do in these times of tribulation. The hope for Alexis is going to happen. The hope for Alexis is going to acquire these things. His angels are going to charge, his angels are going to have charge over us. So this, this is how important faith is. And we have to, we have to have the faith to believe these things will happen. We have to have the faith, we have to have the faith to believe that these things are going to happen. What the Yahweh Shai is saying, about faith when um, when Peter could have cast out that demon he said this this go not out but by praying this go not out this go not out but by praying and fasting so praying and fasting is a huge thing to do in order to build that faith and a way most a, a way the most time might even test your faith is when 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 the great famine comes you might not have food for a week how's your faith gonna be then you know, how's your faith going to be then? Are you going to have faith that the Most High is going to send angels to, to provide you food in the corner over there? You, 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 have, to have, that you have to have that type of, um, you have to have that amount of faith. You know, you, you have to think spiritually too, because having faith is, having faith is thinking spiritually. Because we can't, we can't see faith. Faith is spiritual, you know? So, yeah. um, Matthew 21, 21 and 22. Matthew chapter 21, starting at verse 21. Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So that's also how I'm sure talking about then also the key the key to, to what you said there was when you pray automatically assume that you're going to ask for, you're going to receive what you what you've prayed for. You know, and again that comes with having faith because it's easy to just pray for the sake of it, hoping that you're gonna hoping that the most time your whole Bashim or Shire is gonna answer answer you. Rather than saying to yourself, you know what, I know the most has got my back, he's my sincere shield and butler. Whatever ask me, whatever ask the most high. Gonna supply me, it's gonna supply me accordingly, you know. And that's what Howard was telling his disciples. The, um, obviously, the, they were they were fearing the, fig, uh, the barren fig tree, and 
Um, yeah, they were obviously intimidated by it, and obviously Yahweh Shai got rid of it for them by casting it into the sea. And obviously, he's, and again, that's Yahweh Shai saying, oh, if you have faith, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't essentially worry about it, you know. And again, believing and assuming that you're already going to receive when you're when you're praying to the most time, which also comes with having faith, you know, because you can say you can easily turn around and say, I fully believe in the most high, I've got faith. I, you know, in your heart, but the more I know, can read people's hearts. You know, he can read people's minds, so he knows when you're lying or not. So if you're saying you've got faith, but you don't, the more is gonna know straight away. Men, will, men will know. Men may be, men may be deceived, but the most I cannot be deceived by anything or anyone. So, you know, so and yeah. Also, you have to have faith to the point where you're delusional. You know, um, there's there's certain people that want to make it there's, there's certain people in the world that from a young from a young age they said that they want to be the best people in the world or they want to be the best musician in the world and people class them as delusional saying oh that's not bad but because of their because of their faith their sheer faith made that possible it manifested into it, it manifested into reality so that that's the type of faith you have to have that like Yahushua has said you have to have the faith that you can move mountains if you tell that to, to any random individual, they'll, they'll think you're delusional, they'll, they'll, they'll think that you're going crazy, but that's the type, that's the type of thing that has to be delusional thing. You know, I've got a precept saying, because you can't only have, faith, faith is one aspect, but yeah, there has to be a balance too. So this is, this is James chapter two, starting at verse 17. Even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. Yea, if a man say, yea, a man, Yea, a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So that goes back to what I was saying beforehand, where build by doing the works, by following the law, statutes, the moms, the most time, by praying and fasting, giving arms, that's going to build your faith. And also being around brothers that are faithful too. Because you feed off, each, you, you, you essentially feed off each other's energy. You know? If, if another if, if a brother around you has faith, that's gonna build up your faith too. Because we feed off each other's energy where we're, we're, um, we're electrical beings, so we feed off each other's energy. You know, so that's essentially what it is. So, um, yeah, go to Matthew 9, 27 to 29. So Matthew 9, starting at verse 27. And when Yahash had departed thence, Two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Yahweh shall say unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said, they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then, then touched he their ear, then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Yeah, so that's those are the two blind men again having faith. And how I have a shirt, the son of David, you know? And again, it's, it's essentially present to what I mentioned before about believing that you've received it um, when you're when you're when you're praying to the Most High, believe in whatever you ask for, the Most High is going to supply it to you. Because again, like I said, the Most High can read your heart. You will know whether you're being deceived or you're telling the truth. Same way, how I should ask the two blind men, you believe that I'm able to heal, to heal you from blindness, and they said, Yeah, Lord. And also, how should I get? He has the ability. Due to the Most High, he has the ability to read someone's heart and their mind, so he knows whether they're being truthful or they're being or they're, um, or they're not telling the truth. So they were able to have the faith in the Howard Shai that he was able to cure them from their blindness. And because of the faith, because of the faith that um, that they that they had in the Howard Shai, they were cleansed from their blindness. You know, and that's going to show that faith goes a long way. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry, guys. I don't know who you are, what you do, but God bless you. They who do the work of the Lord, their rewards are in the hands of the angels at the gates of heaven. Bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Um, so this is Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 10. When Yahushua heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, nor in Israel. So there's great faith lacking in Israel. A lot of our brothers and sisters, they lack faith. And Yahushua noticed this as well. Yahushua noticed that the, um, the, scattered, the, um, the scattered Israelites had more faith than the actual Jews that were dwelling in the land of Israel. But the Pharisees, the Pharisees had no faith, the Sadducees had no faith, all these different sects of people had no faith. 
Yeah. Even the, the, the zealots, the Sakari, they have, they have no fear because Yahweh Shai told them in Luke chapter 21 that there's going to be that there's going to be great destruction in Jerusalem by the, by the Romans. Well, what did they do? They wanted to hearken to their own will and fight the Romans and they lost. They suffered great destruction. So they lack faith too. So a lot of these, uh, um, a lot of the time, our brothers, especially you've got, you got these Negro only Israelites, or these Israelites that are less spiritual, they want to cast off people that aren't so called black. But they're going to soon see that a lot of these people that they're casting off, they're actually the sky the left. And they're going to have more faith than them. So that's that's what a lot of brothers have to realize too. That's a script. I'm just going to take the bottom because that's a problem. But it's some songs but it's seven for fate out of the Psalms 37, starting at verse 39, but the salvation of the righteous is of the, is of Yahweh. He is their strength in the time of trouble, and Yahweh shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. There you go. So again, doesn't get more, any more clearer than that. That's also King David saying, yeah, um, you know, the most high was their salvation and also he delivered them in times of trouble. Why? Because they trusted in their salvation, they trusted fully in the most time. And if they were lacking in faith, then that salvation is, is not possible at all. So again, the most high will be a cessation of the buckler during the times of trouble, man. And that's, that's why you need to build up that faith, build up that, build up that quality, you know, because if you go to, and exactly what Psalm said in Psalm 144, it's actually from 1 to 3, when it says, let's be Lord, my strength, teach my hands to war, and my fingers to fight. So again, that's not, King David is not also automatically that call to fight. That's the most high. Also, give him the illustrious spirit and the and the quality and the abilities and attributes to fight. You know, during times of trouble, because King David had many enemies on him, and King David knew of all that his strength came from the most high. Because when you read the Book of Psalms, King David was was constantly referring to the fact that his enemies were also trying to seek him to destroy him, and he always asked for the most high. For wisdom and also to be to be his sincere shoulder buckler. Example when he when he when he when he slew um when he slew Goliath and also he slew when he slew the bear. You know these are people that are much bigger than him in size and strength, but he was able to do he was able to conquer them both effectively due to the due to um the mercy of the Most High. You know. Um, but yeah. Um, even going back to David as well, that uh, these men he was warring against weren't no joke. Like the Philistines weren't no joke, these were tall people, these were Hamites. You see the Hamites today, they, they ain't no joke, they're tall dark skinned men. You know, <laughs> they ain't no joke, the Moabites weren't no joke. You also find that the Amalekites, the Edomites, they weren't no joke. He was, he was, fighting, he was fighting some powerful men. Um, Psalm 69 for Monte Free. Verse 1 To the chief musician upon Shoshanim, a psalm of David, Save me, O Yahweh, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep mire, where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters, where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fell. Mine eyes fell while, my, mine eyes fell while I wait for Yahweh. So there you go. So that's King David saying, you know what? He knows the flood is building. He knows the waters is getting the water is getting real deep. You know, in in when he's when he watch that like, certain movies or, or if you find yourself in a situation where you're unable to float on water and the water's coming deep, you're gonna instantly panic. You'll be screaming your lungs out for a lifeguard to come and save you. But you no, know, David also had other ideas. He's waiting for them. He's waiting for the most high. He ain't no, he ain't calling. He ain't calling upon no man. No princes or kings to come and save him. He's, he knows that the Most High is his, is his ultimate king. He's, he's his true salvation. He's calling upon the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua to come and deliver him. You know, and that's obviously King David in the stress, in the stress of predicament. Go from verse 13 to 17. Same chapter, 
same chapter, but first 13 to 17. Psalm 69, starting at verse 13. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Yahweh, in an acceptable time. O Yahweh, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Deliver me out of the fire, and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me, and out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood overflow me. Neither let the deep swallow me up, and let not the, and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Hear me, O Yahweh, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, and hide not thy face from the servant. For I am for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. So there you go again. The wood, the deep water is overflowing. The uh, King David is not calling upon no man, no human being, no flesh. It's only calling upon Yahweh, on his, on his father, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, you know. The water is overflowing. He's screaming for the most high to have mercy upon him. So God showed up the bottom that he gave has strong faith in the most high. And you know he's asking him to save him from his enemies and from the fire. So that's you know, supposed to show that he ain't looking for anyone else to save him. He ain't, he's, you know, he's not even leading to his own understanding. He's not thinking, he's not he's not arrogant to come out and say, yeah, you know, I can I can I can save myself. I don't need the most high. You know, I was able to rule all these nations and people. I conquered all of them. And and still and still you know and he's still I'm, and I'm still alive. So you are mine to put upon you are mine to put upon the most I can deliver myself. But he knows his place. He knows where he knows um you know he knows his place. He knows that that, that there's also levels to this. He knows that the power comes from the Almighty above. So that's also praise to King David for having you know a meek spirit, and also also not being arrogant. And again, he ain't calling upon, calling upon no man to save him out of the deep waters, you know, which is something that m many people will do. You know, and obviously that's the one. And and <clears throat> when you read, when you do a, a character study based on King David, where from the from the Book of Chronicles, Kings and Samuel, every time he went, every time King David went to war, he was consulted the Most High whether he should go up against the Philistines and and, and other nations and stuff like that. Where you know some people just go upon their own will and just you know, no, I'm going to take them on regardless, you know, without without getting the green light from the, from the Most High. Also, that's going to show how much strength and faith of uh, King David had in the Most High. Because he knew he was the ultimate saviour. The, the ultimate father. Yeah, yeah. This is 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting at verse 23. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man fled from him and were so afraid. So that goes to show that for the test of time, our people's faith has always been questionable. Now they, all of them fled from Goliath. None of them believed that they could defeat Goliath with the spirit of the Most High, despite what the Most, despite what the Most High had done for them. The Most High had already got them to the land. The Most High had already got them out of the land of Egypt through the 10 great plagues. But our people still lack faith. This is verse 25. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to the fire Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall we do? And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine, and taketh away the reproach of Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? So that's that, that was David's attitude. It was like, he's, he's, this, he's, this, he's this clown. Do you get what I mean? He's, he's this clown. He's this, yeah, he's too, but he's a clown. He's uncircumcised. The most time with him. Right, right. The most time with me. I've got the spirit of the most time. Right. So you, what, what, what the hell can this guy do to me? Right. And the, 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 hey, David was basically mocking him. So David showed great faith. That's why um, the most time said, um, what do you say again? He said, a man after my own heart. You know, because no Because he had the whole army of Israel scared to fight this this, this Philistine. And these, these these were men that were experienced in war, expert in war. They said that about the tribe again, they were expert in war. But they were scared to fight this Philistine because they lacked faith. And um, Verse 27, and the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. 
But yeah, that's that's the whole point. The whole point is that King David didn't they freedom as nothing. Then my how told him was he freed him as nothing because he knew that anything was possible for the spirit of Yahweh. This, this book in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, the whole chapter of Hebrews, the whole chapter of Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11 is basically a book based on faith. This is a book that can build up your faith. It, it, it pretty much lays out the accounts of the great men of the Lord having faith. So this is Hebrews chapter 11, start at verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things not. Now faith is the now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So as I said, you can't see faith. Faith is spiritual. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't see faith from a physical lens. It's all spiritual. It's just, faith is faith. It's just hope. You know. Um, verse two. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And start at verse six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of Yahweh of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an, ark, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. So Noah's a prime example of having great faith because pretty much forsake he, he thought he forsake all the naysayers because what do you think people were saying when they were they were they were, they were seeing no blow the ark they were like what the hell you doing it's never rain before it, what are you talking about it there ain't gonna be no flood so he pretty much had to fight all them demons so that, that, that that's a testament to Noah's great faith yeah, he, he 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 was set apart and that's how that's what we have to do as well we have to be set apart because a lot of all these people walking around there they have no clue what's going on and if you try to warn these people what's going on, they're not going to hearken to the truth. So, again, it's a spiritual warfare. So their, de their demons are going to try and jump on us to affect our faith. And we have to fight them. We have, we have to essentially fight off the demons that Noah did. Because amount, imagine the amount of people that told Noah that this ain't, this ain't going to happen. If you feel sweet, if you feel sweet mentally and spiritually, you would have hearkened unto them and said, oh, you know what? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I ain't building this. I ain't building this. Well, let me just go back into the world. But he didn't. So yeah, Hebrews 11 really brings out more core accounts of our forefathers having great faith. It talks about Abraham. It talks about many. So this is verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up, and he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that Isaac shall thy seed be called. Counting that Yahweh was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also, from whence also he received him in a figure. So again, Abraham by Abraham by his great faith, Abraham by his great faith, he was willing to deliver up Isaac as a sacrifice. I mean, that, that, your faith's got to be through the roof if you're willing to do that, and not to mention the fact that. Most I told him from a, from a full time that Isaac was going to be the seed, was going to be um, the vessel that he would choose to um, to build up this great nation that he promised Abraham. I mean, that he promised Abraham, and to give him the land of Canaan, which um, then became the land of Israel. So we go, we go, we go think about, we go analyze our faith and really think to ourselves: if the Most High told us to do this, or if the Most High told us, oh, you know what, go and sacrifice yourself right now, or, you know, whatever. But we really got to analyze and think, would we do that? You know? And yeah, so that, that's that's really what it is, you know. And of course the most I wasn't allowed to do that. So that was that was pretty much the most I tested them to see if we have great faith. So yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we're just gonna close out. So, and uh, yeah, before we close out as well, um I hope yeah, brothers and sisters were edified by this lesson and the whole this, this lesson is able to increase brothers and sisters' faith and 
greedy, you know, um, preparing for the great tribulation, the great famine, the pestilence, so on and so forth. So, yeah, we got to give praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Ma'ashem, Yahushai, Ma'ashem, 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 Ma'ashem,